summary of the poem. The speaker says we should glorify God because he has given us dappled, spotted, freckled, checkered, speckled things. This poem says dappled in a lot of different ways. The speaker goes on to give examples. We should praise God because of the skies with two colors like a two-colored cow and the little radish dots on the side of trout and the oil fallen chestnuts look like red coals in a fire and the blended colors of the wings of a fence a kind of bird and landscape divided up by humans into plots for farming and for all the different jobs that humans do. In short, the speaker thinks we should praise God for everything that looks a bit odd or unique, everything that looks like it does not quite fit in with the rest. All these beautiful, mixed-up, ever-changing things were created or furthered by a God who never changes. The speaker sums up what he believes should be our attitude in a brief final line phrase him. The majesty of God, as with a number of poems by Victorian poet Gerard Manley Hopkins Pied Beauty is a kind of song of praise to God. It takes a beautiful, detailed look at the world in all its variety and sees in this and abundance the glory of God's creation. In particular, the poem admires God's capacity for creating opposite. The poem celebrates God's work and invites the reader to do the same. Pied means having two or more colors and it is this quality of variety that the speaker most admires about God's work. This is primarily expressed through a close look at the natural world, but the poem also sees it in the traits of humankind and in more abstract categories. The first stanza, which opens with a prayer to God that praises dappled things. Another way of saying pied is mostly about the natural world. The speaker marvels at nature, saying in it God's majestic theological design, which just means that God made the world as it is with intent and purpose. The speaker lists some of these more visual examples of pietness skies of two colors, specifically the appearance of a gathering storm, the spotty pattern on fish, the contrast of chestnuts with this grain cutting, the coloring on birds' wings, all of these are part of God's design and deserving of attention and praise. But it's not just the natural world that shows God's glory, it also human activity. Pied beauty can be 
found in the oil that people work the land think of green turf contrasted with the color of brown soil as well as within the levels of humanity more generally. Here the poem says the sheer variety of human work as a type of white beauty. It's not possible to say for sure what gear and tackle and trim represent but whether they relate specifically to farm-based labor or more varied traits like fishing and cloth making, they are certainly meant to build this sense of beauty in variety. Indeed, part of the poem's aim is to argue the beautiful evidence of God's design is everywhere, not just in the natural world. The second stanza makes this point with forceful punctuation by shifting the focus from concrete examples of pied beauty to a more abstract list of opposites, swift and slow, sweet and sour, light and dark. In other words, it's not just the obviously beautiful things in the world that showcase God's majesty. It's also in the world limitless variety, the way in which contradictory categories can exist in complete harmony. In this, the speaker sees God's paternal love for the world his fathering fault. Beginning and ending with a glory and praise, Pied Beauty is a poem that strives to turn the reader's attention to the beauty of the world and to see in that beauty the intelligence and benevolence of the Christian God. All of existence, according to the poem, stands as a testament to God's capacity for creation. The variety of the world is an often undervalued, but no less powerful, aspect of its beauty.